Alright guys, we're up in a uh, flatwood type habitat and uh, we come up to this um, isolated pond out here and uh, this area is um, specifically known well not specifically but known for uh, having gopher frogs which are uh, a threatened species of frog in North Carolina and uh, believe it or not we actually have one here alright guys this is the Carolina gopher frog or Rana capito um, there's a few other species of gopher frog found throughout uh, the southeastern and uh, south central United States there's the uh, well there's the Florida gopher frog I believe and then there's the Mississippi gopher frog but uh, Carolina gopher frogs are found in North Carolina the only species of gopher frog found here but um, uh, they're pretty distinctive in having those uh, those that mottled appearance like that and the uh, the black spots and uh, also the warts that you can see on the back like most leopard frogs are quite smooth bullfrogs are smooth but uh, these are in the same family as leopard frogs and bullfrogs and um, as you can see very stout bodied almost like a toad very big head which are uh, really the distinctive features and also we just noticed how camouflaged they are against the uh, the sand and the uh, the lichen which is right here but yeah these frogs are uh, late winter breeders and uh, breed from uh, mainly through March and uh, they call on the first rainy nights warm nights the males usually call and what's interesting is their call sounds like a rolling snore um, that can be heard from quite a distance uh, it's quite loud frogs but uh, uh, the only problem is with these frogs is just they're not doing very well because their habitat which is a uh, very prized for residential areas because of the the uh, the soil and how it's usually flat but um, usually uh, these type of areas gopher frogs are found in are somewhat hilly areas so but uh, as you can see it has uh, dorsolateral ridges along the sides of the back and those are usually an orange color and as you can see there's black blotches on a a tannish gray color um, some orange on the face it's very overall neat looking frogs um, including their habit habits which is uh, after breeding season they uh, leave the wetland areas and go upland and uh, they live in stump holes um, but most of their range um, besides North Carolina into South uh, South Carolina they live in uh, gopher tortoise burrows but uh, which is where they get their name gopher frog but around here we don't have uh, gopher tortoises so they usually live in uh, stump holes which are uh, like root cavities left by uh, dying trees so um, they usually live down in those and uh, I think if we had gopher tortoises they'd do a little better but they're just not found here so but yeah gopher frogs are known as a defense to uh, cover their face um, with their little feet well actually big feet but yeah, now you can really see that pattern just very uh, boldly uh, blotched and there's like a lot of uh, little warts and stuff on the back as you can see and uh, yep fully developed frog compared to the tadpole we found them as it's pretty interesting and you see they're very fat frogs for, for being a ranid usually they're more slender but uh, yeah these guys live mainly terrestrial lives they're uh, they only come back to the water to breed and which is in the late winter usually and they lay their uh, eggs in these grasses because normally this pond this is an infertile pond so it dries up every other year so maybe every year this year it's not completely dry but um, normally it's up to here in water so the eggs are laid up towards the surface of the water um, very similar to leopard frogs as tadpoles throughout the entire stage until they usually get close to metamorph or close to where they metamorph when you can actually see the pattern and stuff so but yeah very distinctive looking frogs very cool natural history they have too bad they're rare though because uh, I'd love to see these a little more often adults usually average about like two maybe three inches long the body and um, very uh, heavy bodied frogs more like a toad in appearance very big heads and um, I do believe they yeah they do eat mainly crickets like that one right there can't really see it but very neat looking frog you see they got a lot of banded pattern on the leg um, yeah I guess we're ready to uh, let this frog begin its life as a juvenile or a sub adult I'm not sure what you call a juvenile um, and then find a place up uphill where you can find a little stump hole 
and uh, he'll probably stay there for another two years, or well, maybe six months for a male, because I heard they mature a little quicker than females, but, yep, and he'll be back down at this, uh, this pond right here to breed sometime. So, yep, we'll let him go. And uh, here's the gopher frog just getting ready to be released. Uh, probably more of them sitting around the pond just like this, getting ready to move upland for uh rest the most of their juvenile life and then they'll come back to the pond to breed in the f late winter when the first rains come and uh yeah pretty cool ending to to uh taking care of this frog giving it a a good chance of survival so yeah here he goes uh, hopefully well maybe I can get him to hop into the water or he's just going to play a leapfrog this next one should get him. Here he goes. To live his life in harmony. Alright guys, here's a, a stump pole. That's actually uh, where a tree like that died and then decayed and then what was left with sort of the root tunnels and stuff were left behind and so it, it creates excellent habitat for vertebrates and invertebrates like spiders and stuff. But uh, yeah, this is where gopher frogs spend most of their time around here is in those burrows. And I believe they're nocturnal, aren't they? So they come out at night to forage for uh, insects. So, uh, yeah. Guess we're uh, out of here.